Hey guys, welcome to another vlog. Today we're going to be talking about the brand new MacBook Pros that have just come out from Apple and they are freaking amazing. So if you guys watched my previous video about my new laptop, I got the M1 MacBook Air and it has been a phenomenal laptop. It's easily the default laptop I recommend to anybody who asks me what kind of laptop to get. Even if you're not in the Mac world, just the value proposition of the MacBook Air is absolutely amazing. It's a super fast computer, no fans, super quiet, thin, easy to carry, great battery life. Like I did a whole video about how much I love the MacBook Air and I'll leave the link up over here. But today Apple has really gone back to the roots of what made a MacBook Pro such a great computer, such a default computer for like so many professionals, especially creative professionals. So a couple of years back, like in 2016, when they redesigned the previous MacBook Pro, they were aiming for aesthetics and thinness and lightness. So they've gone back on that a little bit this time, but to give you amazing performance and amazing features. Let's just go quickly over what they did and why the new MacBook Pro just seems like such an amazing machine. So here you go. This is the new design of the MacBook Pro. So as you can see, it's got a lot of its ports back. So we got an SD card slot, three USB-Cs, a MagSafe connector, so they brought that back as well as a high impedance headphone jack. Let me talk about the port situation. I have tons of colleagues who all use MacBooks and things and they always have to carry around a dongle. The main issue is the HDMI port, especially when you want to do presentations and stuff. So I'm so glad that they brought the HDMI port back in this one. Additionally, you also get an SD card slot. So if you're a video creator like myself, or if you like photography or music production, you guys will know how important an SD card slot is. I think it's just required to have in a professional laptop. Um, you know, I can do without it on my MacBook Air. I do have a dongle that gives me SD card slots, but just having it on the laptop is so much nicer. I'm so glad that Apple has reversed their decision and like eliminating all the ports. And finally, they give you like the ports that you really need on a laptop that you would use to make professional work. So now let's talk about the screen. Now this is freaking amazing. So they've increased the resolution of the screen now to up to 256 PPI. So it's almost at 4K for the 16 inch MacBook. It's almost at 4K resolution and They've also increased the screen dimension. So it's a 16 by 10 versus 16 by nine. They have included a notch, which you can't see in this. Ah, there you see it. So here is the notch. It kind of looks like the same kind of notch that you have on your iPhone. Now, the idea behind this is to free up that top border real estate, as well as include a higher fidelity camera. So in this one, they have a you know, 1080p camera instead of a 720p with, you know, F2 aperture. It'll make your whole webcam experience much better. Now, the way Apple's approaching this is going to be able to make that top area completely black if you want, and that should hide the notch for you. Or you can push your menus up there. That's the main reason they have the notch. What would usually take up the top bar of your screen, your menus, and not going to be pushed up into that notch area. So I don't mind it. I think it's pretty cool. I'll have to see one in real life and use one to really tell you whether this is something that's going to be distracting or not. But in my opinion, I don't think this is really going to be distracting. They call this new screen the Liquid Retina XDR. Obviously, uh, they have their marketing fluff, but check out the specs of this screen first of all as i told you the high resolution with that camera notch over here you can't even see it in this image because it's hidden with the black bar and then you get pro motion that's 120 hertz which is amazing now uh, the way that they implement ProMotion is pretty cool. They'll scale down the frame rate of the monitor for to save battery life, but it can go up to 120 hertz. So really cool for gaming and things like that. Like, And we'll come to gaming when it comes to performance because I think this is going to be a gaming beast. Uh, apart from that, HDR display. So this is a mini LED screen. So you're going to get really deep blacks. You're going to get really bright brights. So up to a thousand nits of sustained brightness. 1600 nits peak brightness now if you really watch hdr content this is going to blow your mind contrast ratio this is how deep the blacks can get and of course the color gamut still p3 so they've given you a really amazing screen on this laptop and even if you're the most casual of users and you don't use any of the other features that the macbook pro has 
this is really gonna make a big difference to your day-to-day -day usage of this laptop it's gonna feel more smooth because of the 120 hertz you're gonna be able to see that hdr effect when you watch hdr content or even when you don't when you're just using the screen with the deep blacks and things like that you're really going to feel the difference if you pick up a macbook pro so quickly let's talk about performance apple has introduced two new chips the m1 pro and the m1 max max is the better one of course both have a 10 core gpu but they do scale down a little bit if you go for the cheapest macbook pro that i'm just warning you guys uh up to a 16 core gpu for the pro and a 32 core gpu for the mac now i was looking at some of the benchmarks that they were talking about 10.4 teraflops for the max that's about as much as a ps5 okay just so you guys know how much graphical power you're getting you get up to 32 gigs of ram on the m1 pro and i would say that's enough like i have an 8 gig macbook air and it runs everything perfectly fine i think most people will be more than satisfied with 30 gigs of memory the m1 max goes all the way up to 64 gigs so the way it works is the graphics are integrated into the soc so it's kind of like intel inside graphics but much much more powerful and the other thing is that they have a unified memory architecture that means the cpu and the graphics actually share the same memory so if you get 64 gigs of memory hypothetically you'll have almost 64 gigs of video ram to play with and of course it's got like dedicated stuff to run prores and different video codecs and all that so it's going to be insanely fast so here's the specs 20 streams of 4k prores insane guys it's going to be super fast up to seven streams of 8k prores so that means you're simultaneously playing seven 8k videos without slowdown and here are some insane performance numbers okay the 14 inch macbook pro with m1 max is 3.7 times faster than the previous generation i7 3.7 times and the 16 inch model with the 8 core i9 processor two times faster like i really think intel's in trouble in terms of bringing processor performance and efficiency even the graphics 13 times faster than the Intel Iris graphics on the previous generation. Three times faster than the highest end graphics card. You'd have to pay close to a thousand dollars, I think, extra to get this graphics card, the 5600M, and it's destroying it, just destroying it with 3x performance. Like, this thing is ridiculous, man. And even with all this power, you're not sacrificing battery life. The most battery life in any Mac ever, the 16 inch model gets 21 hours of battery life. That is pretty amazing stuff. Uh, and you know, my MacBook Air is rated for about 18 hours of battery life and I do get it. And uh, you know, it's, it's sacrificed a little bit on the 14 inch model, but you know, these chips were not designed for efficiency. They're designed for performance. And they're still getting 17 to 21 hours of battery life. Apple has really done some amazing stuff. Another crazy thing that they've done is improved the speed of the SSD, which was already like industry leading. Four gigabytes per second is considered to be an extremely fast internal SSD. And that's what the MacBook Air runs. And it's one of the reasons why it's so fast and it's able to... Uh, you know, use that as cache. So even if you don't have enough RAM in your computer, like it'll offload some of the RAM's task to the SSD. They just doubled it, almost doubled it with this new laptop. It's 7.4 gigabits per second. You, just buy storage that fast is extremely expensive. Now, I don't know if all the laptops are going to have this. Maybe the 7.4 gigabits per second is reserved for the 8 terabyte hard disk or something like that. But if it's from the base model, this is going to be a game changer in terms of like mobile laptop performance. And on top of all this, they've improved the mics, three studio quality mics on this. And, and the mics are really good. Even on the M1 MacBook Air, the mic is really good. Like in a pinch, instead of using this, I could use a MacBook Air. It doesn't really compare to this, but we'll have to see how good the, you know, they're claiming to be studio quality on the MacBook Pro six speaker sound system with 80 percent more bass like it's definitely going to sound amazing because even the macbook air sounds amazing so i don't know how much better this will be and you can also fast charge this laptop 50 percent of the battery in 30 minutes and on top of all that if you get the max processor you can drive up to four monitors with this thing so three 6k monitors three 
6K XDR monitors, running HDR, and the one 4K at 60 from the HDMI port. I wish I was more of a pro laptop person because I would easily be buying this laptop right now. Like today is the day to buy a MacBook. If you ever even thought of buying a MacBook Pro, today is the day to get one because they have fixed almost every issue that I ever had with a MacBook Pro. They've given you more ports, more performance, better screen, and even the whole screen was amazing. Improve the webcam, improve the sound system, improve the mics, improve the keyboard apparently, we'll have to see. They got rid of the touch bar. But, uh, you know, honestly, Mamta has, uh, you know, 2018 um, MacBook Pro with the touch bar and she barely uses it. So I don't think that'll really be missed. And just such an amazing job Apple did this time with the laptops, you know. And yes, they're definitely expensive. Let's just quickly look at the pricing of these guys. So the 14 inch MacBook Air starts at 8,499 dirhams, which is roughly around $2,100 or so, Nine in, in the US is $1,999. But you'll notice that this is an eight core GPU and the same benchmarks don't apply that we've been seeing. You'll probably get a little bit better battery life out of this. And then the 10 core GPU is going for almost uh, you know $500 more. And then if you really want to spec it up and make it like a beast of a machine, and you're looking at a 15,000 dirham laptop over here, but I'll tell you something, these laptops last for an amazingly long amount of time. Mamta has two laptops she uses. She has a 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro, which we got in 2014. And she still uses it for some of her graphic design work. I have a MacBook Air from 2014, which my brother's using now, and it's in perfect working condition. And it's still very capable. And I'm running a 2013 iMac over here. But whereas when I was in the Windows world, like I felt like I'd need to update my laptop every two, three years. The MacBooks definitely last you longer. They have longer OS support. Yes, it's an investment. Like if you want the max specced out machine is gonna be about, you know, close to $4,000, something like that with a really big SSD and, you know, 64 gigs of RAM and like insane performance. Like you can do all kinds of stuff on this. You can do 3D rendering. It'll probably be a gaming beast if they start making games for Mac. Like this should be able to run games equally good to a PS5. It's easily gonna last you for five years for anything that you wanna do. If I were to buy a laptop today as my only computing device, I would be going for a, probably a 16 inch MacBook Pro. But I'm more of a desktop person and I only use the laptop more for like, you know, not really pro work. Like it's more as a travel thing and you know, chilling on the couch kind of thing. I don't really stress it too much in terms of day-to-day -day usage. My iMac is the workhorse. I'm eagerly, eagerly waiting for them to put a M1 Max chip inside a 30 inch iMac or even a, you know, a Mac mini, something like that. If they give me an iMac with this kind of performance and maybe like a 5K Retina display with HDR 120 Hertz, even if they charge me $4,000 for it, I'm gonna buy it. Cause these things last me for like seven years, man. As you can tell, I'm super excited about these laptops and the direction that Apple is going in, in terms of building their own chips and providing this performance. If you wanna buy a laptop and you have any kind of intense workflow that you have in mind for the future, you can get this one. And if you just need a laptop that's gonna be really, really amazing for like 90% of the things that you need to do, I would still recommend the M1 MacBook Air. It is that amazingly good. It's really a game changer in the industry. You're gonna see a lot more PC manufacturers now scramble to reach this level of performance and, and overall design. If you like this video, hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to watch more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next one.